I forgot what I was gonna say. I want to sort of spruce up my mom's kitchen, living, and dining area by making some new curtains and some new chair cushion covers. She's had the same ones for quite a while now, and though they are lovely, she made the curtains, I made the chair cushion covers. They are pretty old and are getting a little bit worn out. So I thought it would be nice to make her some new ones. The timing is rather impeccable. She's been out of the house a lot lately, so I can sneak around and measure and make things without her knowing. I mean, she knows about two of them. I, cause I asked her what she thought of the fabric. So it's not a total surprise. I don't want to do something that she's not going to like. I just really want to do that right now because she's going through a really rough time and I thought it'd be nice to have something fresh and new and just do something special. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's get to work. I began by measuring the width of the windows and the length of her current balances. The goal was to make the balances just a little bit wider than double the width of the windows so it would be a nice full gather. And here are the fabrics I had to work with. I found them all at the thrift store. A remnant of fabric for the seat cushions. And then this tablecloth was an excellent find because it's for the living room window. And she has a blue rug in there. And she has chickens in her decor. And look at this. Chickens! These two panels of long curtains were what I had in mind for the kitchen and dining room balances because she happened to mention that the next time she was able to make balances she wanted to do white. And they had some cloth covered buttons on them which I wasn't sure I could incorporate into the project but if I couldn't I could just squirrel them away for a future one. The living room balance was up first so I set to seam ripping the edges of the tablecloth. I do feel a little conflicted every time I take a piece apart especially one like this one because it looks to have been lovingly hand stitched but I am also giving it new life as a beautiful piece to be appreciated for years to come so there there's that. Then I pressed all the edges nice and flat. I decided to cut the fabric out downstairs at the kitchen table so as to spend some time with my mom's puppy that I was puppy sitting. My goal was to try to match the designs as closely as possible and that took a wee bit of figuring. And when I say a wee bit, I mean quite a bit longer than it took to actually cut out the fabric. But I eventually got it accomplished and I used almost the entire tablecloth. I only had a few scraps left over. The tablecloth gave me three long rectangles, and then I grabbed a giant length of cotton poly blend that I also scored at the thrift store to use as backing. Seriously, so grateful for those who donate to my local shop, otherwise I would not be able to do any of this right now, and this channel would probably not exist. I attached the rectangles end to end, making a long, snake-like situation. I finished the sides and the hem of the snake by pressing them under about half an inch and stitching them into place with a regular stitch. And then I did the same thing to the backing, except I made the hem of the backing ever so slightly shorter than the front fabric so as to not allow the undergarments to show. To make the valance and the backing join as one, I pinned and stitched them together along the top edge. Then pressed it under just about half an inch before pressing it under two and a half inches so that the curtain rod could fit through. I stitched that down and the first valance was finished. So the only thing I have left to do on this one is make a little buttonhole in the back because it's so long, it's a little bit bowed. So I need to put a hook right in the center there to kind of hold it up. And I need to put a buttonhole in the actual curtain so that the hook can go through the fabric. But that's it for that one. Now to make the white ones, five of them. I again unpicked all the stitching and pressed the fabric flat and again cut the fabric out on the dining room table to keep the puppy company. I really doubted that I would have enough for all five balances, but I had just enough and the top parts of the long curtain couldn't be used for this, so I squirreled them away for a future project. I did the exact same thing as with the other balance long rectangles and I cut out a twin backing of the cotton poly blend for each. Seriously, I cannot comprehend my good fortune with thrift store finds. Sometimes there was so much of that poly cotton fabric and I am so grateful. I finished the fabric edges, attached the backing and fabric at the top, turned it under for the curtain rod to go through, and after about... I think it was several days, I finished all five of them. I didn't spend all several days just sewing, just so you know, I did do other stuff. I just didn't film it, so I didn't put it on social media. Okay, wait, so maybe it didn't actually happen.
Then it was on to the more complicated project I set to measuring with the help of my assistant. I will confess that I have made two sets of these cushion covers. This is the third set, and I have never documented the pattern. So I do have to remeasure every time, but oh well. Really, the most complicated part is the little right angle for the chair cushions. I wrote down all the measurements in a professional manner on a post-it, and all I had to do from there was add seam allowances. I then took a little break from sewing to lay some tile. And then something really very crappy happened that I am not ready to talk about. I honestly didn't think that I would want to finish this video or even get back into sewing, but I was surprised to find out that was actually what I needed to do. And I wasn't able to for quite a while, but once I was able to start again, I realized this is what brings me joy and helps me to cope making things. For the cushion covers, I just cut out the shapes from the measurements with seam allowances added, and unfortunately there wasn't enough of the printed fabric to cover all of the cushion covers. This is all the fabric I had left over after cutting out the top and side pieces for each of the cushions, but not to fret. I ran into the same problem the last time I made the cushions, and I just used a remnant of fabric that was in a completely different color to put on the bottom side of the cushions, and no one even noticed. They'll never know. How would they know? Unless, of course, you make a YouTube video about it and tell everyone. So I rummaged in my stash and found a remnant of some sturdy white fabric that would work beautifully, and there was just enough of that to make the bottom of each cushion cover. However, for one of the chair cushions, I did have to divide it in half to be able to make it work, and since I was doing it on the one cushion cover, I really had to do it on the other one too. It wasn't absolutely necessary, but I did go ahead and do that extra step so both of the undersides of the cushion covers would match. Both would have a seam down the center because even though no one else is going to see it, it's important to me. And here are all the pieces, oh, except for the ties. In total, I needed 24, 24 ties. That's a lot of ties. So I set to work making those first just to get them out of the way. Right sides together, pull them through with a loop turner, 23 more times, and I had my ties. It's not necessarily necessary to do this for cushion covers, but I do like making cushion covers removable so they can be washed. So I inserted zippers into all of the covers. Then I joined all the side pieces end to end and attached them each to their top cushion piece right along the edges. Next I attached the opposite edge of the side pieces along the edges of the bottom cushion piece, making sure to remember to unzip the zipper before I attached it because that's the opening I would be using to reach into and pull everything through to the right side. Then I had to take a quick break because someone was crying in her sleep because she was having a nightmare, so I woke her up and let her tell me all about it. So I guess that helped. Before completely finishing the bottom side of the cushions, I had to make sure to remember to insert the ties, but I didn't. I forgot and had to seam rip and redo it, but just on one of them. And with that, the bench cushion covers were both complete, but I still had the chair cushion covers to finish, which are just a little more difficult because of this right angle to maneuver around. Basically, it just requires a lot of pinning and clipping, which I masterfully filmed just halfway out of frame, and then taking it slow with stitching, a little bit of pivoting, and a little more clipping, again, so artfully halfway out of frame and the chair cushion covers were also finished. It was finally time to switch out the cushion covers and slip the new ones on. I must say, if you ever want to make removable chair cushion covers, it is so helpful to cover the foam in fabric, specifically a slippery, slidey fabric. It can make such a difference getting that cushion cover on or off. I used a taffeta, but a satin would also be excellent. I know that this was a boring, not so cheerful video, but life is kind of rough right now. A massive change has occurred in my life and I'm not sure where I'll go from here. I'm not sure if I'll be able to continue this channel. I hope I will, because I did discover that this is what I truly enjoy doing, making things and sharing what I do. So, at the risk of sounding sentimental, thank you for joining me in my adventures here. When you subscribe or comment, it really does encourage me. So thank you.